Welcome to The Honest Media. Today is Thursday, May 18th, 2017. And for those watching at home tonight, you do not know this, but we are actually broadcasting live to Facebook. So thank you all for joining us, whether you're watching me live or you're watching me at night on Newsmax TV. So we've got, it's been an insane week. We have an, a crazy amount of news to cover, whether it's fake news about the Trump administration and yes again, Russia, or whether it's real news. But I wanna start by talking about a solemn topic. Something really sad happened this morning. I'm sure everybody already knows about it, but Roger Ailes, the brain behind Fox News, passed away today at the age of 77. And his wife released a statement to Drudge Report, and this uh, is an article that comes from LifeZet.com. I'll read a little bit right now. Former, former Fox News chairman and founding CEO Roger Ailes passed away Thursday, according to a statement from his wife, Elizabeth Ailes, first posted on the Drudge Report. I am profoundly sad and heartbroken to report that my husband, Roger Ailes, passed away this morning, the statement read. Roger was a loving husband to me, to his son Zachary, and a loyal friend to many. He also was a patriot profoundly grateful to live in a country that gave him so much opportunity to work hard, to rise, and to give back. Even today, every cable network is, in many ways, a Roger Ailes production. During a career that stretched over more than five decades, his work in entertainment, in politics, and in news affected the lives of many millions. And so, even as we mourn his death, we celebrate his life. He was my friend and mentor, a talent we will never see again, who understood how to produce powerful storytelling in politics, entertainment, and news, said Life Z editor-in-chief and Fox News contributor Laura Ingram. Countless television personalities for whom he worked owe their careers to his good judgment and guidance. If only Donald Trump had a visionary and strategist, someone who understood the message discipline like Roger Ailes inside his White House today. And of course, this is the most unfortunate part of Mr. Ailes' life. He was tragically brought down by a series of allegations, and the article continues. Ailes' death came just nine months after he resigned from the network following a slew of sexual harassment allegations. Quote from Dan Abrams in the New York Times op-ed says, Mr. Ailes, of course, had a lasting effect not just on media, but on American politics as a whole. Recent events will undoubtedly tarnish and potentially define Mr. Ailes' legacy, but even today, every cable network is, in many ways, a Roger Ailes production. And this is something we've covered previously on this program. How sad it is that this very proud man with a legacy that will stretch far into the future, the guy who created the modern cable news phenomena, in many ways created the 24-7 news cycle as we know it today. This incredibly wealthy man who created many of the personalities who we all tune into late at night to get our fix of the daily news. His memory has been tarnished by mere allegations of sexual harassment from women, including, among others, Megyn Kelly. And Craig, I don't know about you, but I just, I, I've always had a hard time believing in these allegations, and now that he has passed away, I find them even harder to believe. Yeah, I mean, the guy's 77, what was he hitting on Megyn Kelly and his early 70s well i mid 70s yeah. right he would have been 75 he probably to 77. bumped into her in the hallway and said hi and that was about it and that's too much for megan yeah and you know this is the type of thing they brought down bill o'reilly the same way we discussed this on the show a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and how dangerous is it that these very proud very successful men can be brought down by mere allegations yeah that's all you need now no proof no anything just hearsay and they're not even logical is what eats me yeah. the worst because this is a guy who I mean he's the CEO of Fox News mm -hmm. he's got a lot of money mm -hmm. do they really expect us to believe that if he wants to go out there and prowl on the town and find women his best bet is Megyn Kelly one of his employees yeah that's that doesn't make any sense at all it's just totally ludicrous and then of course now 
This is a formula they're go they've been trying to follow. This is a formula they, they've followed with, again, Bill O'Reilly. They're trying to say Sean Hannity as well has sexually harassed women to get him to step mm -hmm. down. And of course, Hannity immediately struck back. He went live on the air and read a statement uh, about his legal actions he is taking against these people trying to defame his good name. And maybe that will be the end of it if we finally get someone who will fight back. But just back to what we were saying a moment ago, it is so tragic to me that this guy who created, I mean, I'll just read a little bit of this. This is from the Pew Research Center. These are the uh, main sources of news for the 2016 election. Trump voters, 40% of them had Fox News as their main source of news. Now, that's compared to, we'll just give the next one down in the line, is CNN at 8%, Facebook, 7%, NBC, 6%, and it just it goes on down like that. This is a guy who created a powerhouse that is capable of determining the outcome of elections, and now we have to, on the day of his death, sit here and demean his good name further by having, in this very article, Hale's death came just not Nine months after he resigned from the network following slew of sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's horrible. Well, it comes as, uh, it's kind of a recurring theme here. All the top Fox guys keep getting hit with these sexual allegations, probably all by Democratic operatives, just trying to ruin the channel and ruin them so they can take the next election, I guess. And meanwhile, I mean, if you look at the Clinton voters, their top sources of news, it's less than 20% CNN, about 15% MSNBC, around 10% local TV, and it goes on. And this guy, I mean, we've got NPR on here, ABC, New York Times, and CBS, and Fox News actually made the list of the top sources of news for Clinton voters. Mm -hmm. So I think you're really onto something there, that by destroying the reputation of Fox News, destroying the power powerhouses behind it, they're trying to lower the network's capabilities. And mm -hmm. the one thing that I really respect about Fox News, you know, a lot of people give them cre give them a hard time, let's just say, because, well, they're not fair and balanced. They, they employ a bunch of Republicans. Well, that's just it. They're honest about it. They all say the Republicans. Sean Hannity endorsed President Trump very early on in 2016. It, they were not hiding who they were or what they believed. So when you watch them, whether you're a liberal or a Republican, you know what lens they're coming through. They're not feigning an unbiased opinion like Rachel Maddow, Morning Joe, and others. You're watching The Honest Media. We will be back in just a couple minutes after these commercials. Welcome back to The Honest Media. So now that we have discussed the tragic news of the day, I want to turn to what's going on with the Trump-Russia narrative this week. Because every week it's something new. It, it is totally a bombardment of fake news after fake news after fake news. And the only people who believe this are the people who consider CNN to be a trustworthy network, which... I, God, God have mercy on those people. Mm -hmm. But the newest thing, I don't know, if you've been under a rock, if you don't know what's going on, is the idea that Trump gave top secret, super classified, they call it a different thing in every report, mm -hmm. but he gave information to the Russians. And Russia, and of course, where did this report come from? The Washington Compost, mm -hmm. the people who employ John Podesta, the people who are owned by Trump enemy, uh, Jeff Bezos of Amazon, who Trump previously threatened to go after with um, an antitrust lawsuit. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know just how bad this organization is, we have a new article up this week on thehonestmedia.com, Podesta Marks Washington Post Fall to Journalistic Wasteland, written by yours truly. Uh, the Washington Post was once respected as a fairly honest and trustworthy newspaper, something that quickly changed after, after enemy of President Trump and Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos acquired the Post. This is a guy who publicly sparred with Trump, and then after he publicly sparred with the man who would go on to be our president, the Washington Post, an organization that he owns, defended their boss without telling anybody that they had a conflict of interest. Hmm, imagine that. It's total sleazeball journalism. It would be like if I were defending the station's general manager here at KGPT and didn't mention that he happened to be my boss. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally just, just, 
uh, how anybody can get away with this. You know, I, 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 had, I had an analogy in here. Imagine McDonald's buying a newspaper, which then wrote articles depicting the quarter pounder with cheese and accompanying french fries as a health food, while feigning journalistic integrity and pretending they have no bias. They would be called out immediately as fake news, but when Washington Post does the same thing, they are somehow immune to criticism. Oh, yeah. And well, then, they're one of the globalist shill newspapers, so. And I mean, you can just look in this article we have up on thehonestmedia.com at Jeff Bezos. He, he looks, he bears a striking resemblance to Podesta. We'll leave it that way. You know, all these guys, no offense, Craig, they don't have the beard. They've got the bald head. It's just weird how they all yeah. look alike. Mm -hmm. But then, in February of 2017, for those who don't know who John Podesta is, the Washington Post announced it would hire former Clinton campaign chairman and basically Clinton propagandist John Podesta to work as a columnist. And to, this, is ju this served as the final notice, as far as I'm concerned, that the Washington Post is no longer a news outlet. It is a partisan rag for the Democratic Party. Oh, yeah. And then it should be no surprise that we see them make these following actions. I mean, these are the articles Podesta. This is a journalist. This is a guy, 68 years old, never had a job in journalism in his life. He worked for, he worked briefly as a lawyer when he was young. He started working for congressional Democrats when he got a little bit older. He somehow wormed his way into the Clinton White House as one of the top guys. Then he was one of the top guys in the Obama White House. Then he ran the Clinton campaign directly into the ground. Mm -hmm. This is somehow a journalist to these people. Leaked he, his password to a phishing site. His password was <laughs> P-A-S-S-W-0-R-D. This is the guy we're talking about here. Yeah. And this is Podesta on February 16th, right after he went on at the Washington Post. This is the type, uh, type of unbiased journalism you get from this fake news journalist. Trump's dangerous policy to undermine reality. Mm. And then March 28th, Trump is on a rampage to endanger the planet. Now it's up to us to save it. Oh, God. Then May 12th, Trump top aides must go. Mm -hmm. This is the former chairman of the Hillary Clinton for President campaign, a partisan Democrat who worked in the Clinton White House and the Obama White House, who is now masquerading as a journalist for the Washington Compost. No. He's a great ace scumbag. He was connected to all sorts of shady stuff we won't get into here. But That's yeah. right. We'll get sued by a certain pizza parlor out mm -hmm. of D.C. if we do, like yeah. uh, Mr. Jones at Infowars did. But so now we, when we see the Washington Post come out with this totally fabricated story about Trump leaking top secret, super classified, super secret stuff mm -hmm. to the Russians, which, by the way, I'm pretty sure if anybody can do that, I think the president is allowed to determine yeah. what is classified and what and is I not. And I think they were talking about the exploding laptops, which was uh, mainstream news for like three or four months before Ab they yeah, even well, had it happened a meeting. in April, yeah. yeah. And that is what was information that was recovered after uh, what then, again, the Washington Compost called a failed raid on ISIS, yeah. in which a couple Americans died. It was a very sad event. However, we learned that they have this new capability to sneak bombs onto airplanes using laptop batteries. Yeah. So it was, we gained a lot of good intel at the loss of these lives. Yeah, it's but a this was already pay. known about. They we're talking about this three months ago. It was in the mainstream. It and was on Drudge. It was in the Washington Post. So that's Post. the top secret classified info that he leaked. That it's on CNN every already night. Already yeah, about. but therefore it's top secret. Uh, and you know, basically, this is just an example of the Washington Post. If Trump does it, it's bad. And meanwhile, yeah. this is a national story. This is a horrible sequence of events that we have to cover ad infinitum. But when Hillary Clinton uses her private email server as a Dropbox for foreign governments who give her money mm -hmm. to retrieve information, that's fine. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Trump goes through the proper channels. She did so much illegal stuff that she should be in jail. Whom Abedin should be in jail. Anthony Weiner should be in jail. Well, you talk about illegal stuff. I mean, it goes all the way back. Bill Clinton should be in jail. It is such a joke. Exactly. It is such a joke for these people to even suggest the concept of impeaching Trump. Yeah. Everybody forgets, let alone the number of criminal acts the Clintons did in Arkansas. But once they were in the White House, they sold the Lincoln bedroom like it was a brothel. Yeah. Anybody who donated could become an ambassador in the Clinton administration. Yeah, they're talking about impeaching Trump over absolutely nothing. and Over a fake. Oh, 
Obama story. never even got impeached. I mean, the guy sold 100,000 guns to Mexican drug cartels. The Obama executed an American citizen without a trial. Yeah. It's unbelievable the no stuff this deal. guy got away with. No but deal. because Trump did humana, humana, humana Russia, mm, therefore impeachment. Yeah. It's total insanity. But there is a surprising voice in the Democrat Party that seems to realize you can't just impeach someone because he has an R in front of his name. And this is, again, this is on thehonestmedia.com. Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi. Impeachment has to be about facts. We owe people stability. And tell me you're not shocked to hear this from her, right? It's the first sane thing I've ever heard her say. <laughs> <laughs> you're not kidding. You're not kidding. She said, and I'll quote this, and we have to go briefly to break, and we'll be right back. But Nancy Pelosi, she is the Democrat minority leader of the House of Representatives, a Democrat from none other than California. She said, and I quote, they know I don't subscribe to that, meaning impeachment. In other words, again, if you're talking about impeachment, you're talking about what are the facts, not I don't like him. I don't like his hair. She goes on, we owe the American people some stability in all this. This is the time when he's supposed to be having a honeymoon. So we watch and see what he's going to do. What is his vision? How is he going to implement this? And it's been sloppy. Amazing to hear this semblance of rationality, this, this lack of crazy, foaming at the mouth insanity from the left in 2017. We've got to take a quick moment off. You're watching The Honest Media. We will be back in just a few minutes. Welcome back to The Honest Media. I am your host, Tom Pappert, of course, joined by Craig Chrysler. Um, this is something that is, you know, a lot of people are calling this nonsense about the Trump-Russia thing, the newest nonsense, I should say. They're calling it a cover-up, or they're calling it a distraction, and they may be onto something, because an hour, I kid you not, a single hour before this story about Russia broke, we were getting reports from the Washington Examiner, from Breitbart, from Fox News, about none other than murdered DNC staffer Seth Rich. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't know what was happening with Seth Rich, he was working for the DNC. A lot of people think he may have been the guy who leaked the 40,000 plus emails to WikiLeaks. Julian Assange once gave a slip up basically in one of his uh, uh, interviews with the British media. He said, well, you know, you see people like Seth Rich, they get killed. Mm -hmm. And then the media says, well, are you saying Seth Rich was the DNC leaker? No, I'm saying that people like Seth Rich may have been the, de you know, basically everybody thinks Julian Assange messed up. But we are up. offering a $20,000 reward for any information linked to his That's counting. That's the thing. Yeah. Then they offered a massive reward mm -hmm. in exchange for information about Seth Rich's death. And Seth Rich was killed in what it was initially believed to be a mugging, a robbery. He was walking home on the street. He got attacked. He was beaten bloody. And then he was shot, mm. I believe, in the back, maybe in the back of the head. And nothing was taken from his person. No. Nothing was taken from his person whatsoever. He had his credit cards, he had his cash, he had his ID, he had everything. Now, go on. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, there's apparently a lot more evidence coming out every day that he was the guy who leaked it, which we all suspected from day one. Well, now we have, and, and this is the most up-to-date story I could find, because there's been it's been a slew of information mm -hmm. that, again, has been in the background because an hour after this story broke on Fox News, you get the phony stories about the... the Russian, whatever, 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 yeah. homina, 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 mm -hmm. impeach Trump, Russia, Russia. So this is from the Washington Examiner. The family of murdered DNC staffer Seth Wrench denies the report that he sent WikiLeaks emails. And this is important because the family previously had been somewhat on board with this. This is an updated story. The family of a Democratic National Committee staffer who was shot and killed in Washington last summer denied a report that their son leaked more than 44,000 emails to WikiLeaks before his death. And it is important to realize the death and the leak happened almost uh, in the same week, I believe. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Fox News reported that the 27-year-old Seth Rich may have been the one who leaked the information about the DNC to WikiLeaks that showed, among other things, that the DNC favored Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders in the presidential primary. The report states the federal law enforcement investigators found 44,053 emails and 17,761 attachments between DNC leaders from January 2015 to May 2016 that were sent by Rich 
Seth Rich, to Gavin McFadden, an American reporter and WikiLeaks director based in London, who is now dead. The information was allegedly found in an FBI forensic report on Rich's computer within days of his murder. This was all found by a retired investigator uh, from, I believe, Washington, D.C., who, of course, the left will try to say is discredited. Mm -hmm. If you Google this story, and we all know how, how sleazy Google is, their manipulated results will show you CNN, Washington Post, NBC, mm -hmm. where they all say this has been debunked. Yeah. And their entire reason for saying it's been debunked is because Seth Rich's family said, no, we have no evidence to believe that. However, this is a private investigator who is not working directly with the family, but is working on the murder case independently. Yeah. He's the one who's saying Well, this. it's pretty obvious he was the leaker. There was intel that them leaks were coming from the DNC that whole time, so. Well, and that's just it. The, the part of the reason why they are so adamant in defending this is because they want it to be a Russian hack. Well, yeah, they had to they had to come up with something when somebody started leaking all this stuff, so they just made up the boogeyman Russia, and now that they made him up, the boogeyman, they can't quit going with it. That's right. It's been it's been an insane amount of time. Because Russia's been nobody. They've been nobody to us forever, and then all of a sudden now they're this huge threat. Well, Trump said we should get along with Russia. Therefore, yeah. he's a Russian agent. Yeah. It's, it's a joke. Mm -hmm. And this is all absolutely in defense of their Russian narrative, which has no basis in fact. The 17 intelligence agencies that say Russia, not rich, hacked into the DNC, which again, it's not a hack, it's a leak. These 17 intelligence agencies have been totally debunked as for-profit entities mm -hmm. that are not intelligence agencies at all. They're not the CIA, FBI, DHS, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not a government control. And what does it even matter who did the leak? The important stuff is what was in the emails. Well, no kidding. Yeah. But, but it's the whole idea that it's a hack instead of a leak. Mm -hmm. And if it's yeah. a leak, then somehow it's okay. But if it's a hack, then it's somehow not yeah. okay. It's like when CNN told us, uh, it must have been about a year ago now, that, you know, we, American citizens, independent journalists, citizen mm. journalists, we can't read the WikiLeaks. Yeah, they're illegal Only for us Only CNN mm -hmm. can read the WikiLeaks because yeah. it's illegal. That's right. And this, this is also just a big stage just to throw us off of the actual content of them, which was terrible. I mean, terrible we read the tons of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we read them live on the air because uh -huh. that's what we do on the Honest yeah. Media. And this is something that is just, you know, the Seth Rich murder. Now, we're not saying that it was, you know, who knows? Who knows? The point is, we should be investigating. Wheeler, the private investigator, says the police are totally unwilling to help him. They're totally unwilling to investigate. And Again, this is the type of thing we could get in trouble of for saying, but the Clinton family has a long, long list of mysterious deaths mm -hmm. associated with their being around, yeah. their being present. I believe it's over 100 people. Over 100 people, starting from Arkansas all the way. I mean, it continues after Seth Rich. People who came into contact with them, people who were associated mm -hmm. with them. I, I've not, it, it is peculiar. It yeah. is peculiar. It's beyond peculiar. And. A lot of our older viewers will remember a man by the name of Vince Foster, mm -hmm. who was killed, shot himself twice in the back of the head. I don't know how that's possible. What, one of his hands duct taped too or hands something? Hands were duct taped. Allegedly, he was basically hogtied. Uh-huh. And... Uh, shot himself twice in the head. Suicide. Polls, that's <laughs> right. Polls from the 1990s, when this happened, said that more than half of the people who engaged with the news did not believe the official story and felt the government was hiding something. Well, yeah, if you're hogtied and you shoot, it's pretty hard to shoot yourself twice in the head while you're hogtied with duct tape. And now, 20 years later, we've got the same type of nonsense coming mm -hmm. from the Democrats. And of course, there can be no investigation. Anybody who questions this, it's a conspiracy theory where we're not respecting the family's wish to be left alone. We are somehow the bad guys mm -hmm. for wanting to know how this 27 year old DNC staffer was killed. Yeah. Well, horrible I would, people, you and I. I was reading on something that uh, apparently he was still alive when the cops showed up, and they have body cam footage that they will not release 
or they destroy it already. I may have read something about that. I'm not sure, but we do know that mm -hmm. the police are being totally, according to Detective Wheeler, the, per the private investigator investigating this whole murder, the only one on the case pretty much, the police refuse to help him. He'll probably end up dead in the next couple weeks. He's on, He's too, uh, hopefully he's too pro high profile. That's all we can hope. Mm -hmm. We are watching The Honest Media. We need to take a moment off. We will be back in just a few minutes. Welcome back to The Honest Media. I am Tom Pappert, your host, again, here with Craig Chrysler. Continuing our discussion of this phony Trump-Russia narrative, the Russians had something to say. You know, they're being demonized. You can say, well, of course, they're not going to tell the truth. Uh-huh, they're Russia. But they're being demonized here. They have a right to defend themselves against these accusations. Mm -hmm. And this is from Infowars.com, written by none other than frequent Honest Media guest Dan Lyman. The Kremlin has responded to the media frenzy surrounding implications that President Trump may have, quote, revealed highly classified information, unquote, to Russian officials, calling it, quote, utter nonsense and deeming it hardly worth addressing. This is not the theme for us. It is nonsense said Russian presidential spokesman Dmitry Peskov. We do not want to have anything to do with this nonsense. This is utter nonsense. It is not something to either confirm or deny. Which is about how I feel about it. Yeah. You know, it is very strange. We've talked about this on the show that we end up agreeing more with Russia than our own media here. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes on. Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova, Zak Zakharova, I practice this name, believe it or not, also weighed in on her Facebook page where she cautioned that ingesting American media can be unhealthy. <laughs> I, I totally agree. I think she's on to something. Yeah. They, they, you know, we, we covered a few months ago on this program, there is a new mental illness being diagnosed by psychologists, psycho professionals, mm -hmm. psychiatric professionals across the country that basically is coming from watching this tainted left-wing parasitic news that indoctrinates your brain and makes you into a foaming at the mouth zombie who can do nothing but talk about how evil Trump is. Yeah, and stand and scream. That's right. Yeah. And, and <laughs> you, you go to his inauguration, no! Uh -huh. And then you look and make sure there's cameras. So, you, you know, it's a self-feeding phenomenon. It's, uh -huh. a, it's parasites is yeah. the nicest thing I can say about these sorry, pitiful excuses for human beings. Uh, she goes on. Landed in Madrid, turn on the phone, and there are dozens of messages, she wrote. Are you guys American newspaper reading again? Don't read them. They can be used in different ways, but there is no need to read lately. It is not only unhealthy, but dangerous. Mm -hmm. She also reminded readers that he had sure foreshadowed an imminent Russia conspiracy hit piece to be spun from the meeting. She did. I remember reading this. It was all over the conservative alternative news, Infowars, etc. This very woman said, all right, expect some big fake news bombshell to come from this meeting with the Russian officials. And here we mm -hmm. are. And it just, you know, these loser Democrats, they clearly just want a second Cold War. They clearly want us to go back to the edge of nuclear disaster. Apparently, it's pretty insane uh, because when, when the Russians were commies, the left loved them. But now that they're pretty much hardcore nationalist. Traditionalist, and, capitalist. Yeah, and uh, a Christian nation overall. Now they hate them. That's right. Now they yeah. hate them. They proved communism fails. Now Russia is bad. Yeah. But it's just totally unbelievable that our president of the United States cannot so much as meet with Russian officials. We're not mm -hmm. talking about meeting with Putin here. We're talking about meeting with the ambassador and the foreign uh, minister. He should be meeting with Putin. Why Why shouldn't he not meet Because if Putin? he meets with Putin, <laughs> our media will go into thermonuclear mm -hmm. meltdown well, and say that Putin was giving him marching orders. Then the, he should do it. He needs have Putin over, <laughs> have him stay a week. I mean, it's totally, yeah, have him stay in the Lincoln bedroom maybe, yeah, right? Take, yeah. a, take a tip from the Clintons. Uh -huh. But it's totally, it's totally baffling how these people are, you know, God forbid. It's, it's, uh, it's lunacy. It's psychotic lunacy. But Putin just here said recently that 
the left here suffers from mental illness, which they totally do. And this is the linchpin of the fake news story that we're discussing right now. And this is noted by Dan Lyman. This is something that many people miss because the fake news defeats its own point in this crummy article. They say, as president, Trump has broad authority to declassify government secrets, making it unlikely that the disclosure broke the law. That's from the Washington Post fake news story. Yeah, the president can declassify anything he wants. Because hint, he's the president. Yeah. And it's not like he was on Twitter disclosing this stuff, leaking the top, se- leaking the top secret yeah. documents. He was talking to the top Russian officials that he has access yeah. to speak to. Yeah, and technically he can <coughs> leak anything he <coughs> wants to anybody he wants. Because he has the authority. President of the United States, commander in chief, head of the government, head of the executive branch. He could go on TV today and say whatever the heck he wanted to. He could tell us about the aliens if (laughs) he so chose. I mean, really, Uh he is the president. And Dan. Which we're still waiting for. (laughs) <laughs> we can only hope, right? Yeah. You know, everybody thought Podesta was going to leak the aliens. Maybe oh, it'll that's be Trump. Right, yeah. uh, but the, the, the article goes on. Uh, Nevertheless, the witch hunt continues to intensify, especially with bombshell revelations emerging regarding the mysterious murder of DNC staffer and possible WikiLeaks contributor Seth Rich. And again, many people think this is all a cover-up. A way to distract us from Seth Rich. Mm -hmm. Uh, Media juggernaut Matt Drudge weighed in, declaring that the Post, Washington Post, is participating in, quote, blood sport, possibly at the behest, again, I'm not the only one who comes up with this stuff, see? Uh, Behest of Post owner and Amazon.com CEO Jeff Bezos, whom Trump Trump has warned may be in violation of antitrust antitrust laws. The tweet from Matt Drudge reads as followed. Wash Post newsroom staff openly applauding at latest Trump hit finally clarifies how this has turned into nothing but a blood sport. Next tweet, Wash Post owner personally motivated in blood sport after Trump threat of Amazon monopoly breakup. Follow the clicks. Mm-hmm. And again, we covered this on uh, The Honest Media, just this type of collusion, this type of impropriety, this type of dishonesty. I mean, it is totally unbelievable uh, how Jeff Bezos, who claimed, who claims to have no editorial say in the post editorial content, has stated publicly that his goal for the Post was to be a, quote, watchdog over the leaders of the world's most powerful country. And he said this right after publicly sparring with then-candidate, now-President mm-hmm. Trump. So, again, it's totally, it totally confounds me how anybody can take the Washington Post seriously. They have Podesta as a contributing columnist. They're owned by a guy who just downright hates the President of the United States, mm-hmm. hell-bent on destroying him. Well, I'm pretty sure 90% of their copies are just bought for bird, bird cage liners. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for, actually, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame a bird at all if they wanted to go on that face. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a good spot uh, for the bird liner to, for the droppings to fall, we'll put yeah. it that way. I'm sorry to be gross on television. Um, we do need to take a moment off here in a few seconds. When we come back, we're going to get into some of the other uh, uh, layers of this story. We've also got some great news on the progress of the Trump administration administration toward draining the swamp and filling the government with true patriots who actually want to see this country succeed. We will be back in just a few minutes. You're watching The Honest Media. Welcome back to The Honest Media. I'm Tom Pampert, of course, still here with Craig Chrysler. And we've got more to talk about, about this phony Russia conspiracy. You were telling me a moment ago, if we have to hear more about Russia, we're just going to move there. Yeah, we'll I'm learn the language. We'll do the honest media in Russian. We're broadcasting to Facebook. We'll just stay up to like 5 in the morning Russia time, yeah. so it's an okay time here. They probably speak English. They're pretty smart there, so we don't even got to bother to learn <laughs> it. Smart enough not to read the American news. Yeah. So they can't be, they, they've got to be smart, right? Or use credit cards. Yeah, that's true. They, they, so, but we've got a story now from the Daily Caller, which generally a pretty good outlet, started mm-hmm. by Tucker Carlson. Uh, 
Former DOJ spokesman Comey is trying to take down Trump. And if this is true, then Comey has lied under oath repeatedly when he said that he was not investigating Trump, that he was not asked not to investigate Trump. It just, the guy, if this is true, the guy is a blatant liar. Well, yeah, and he's done a bunch of illegal stuff already. Well, very true. So, former FBI director James Comey may have been building a legal case against President Donald Trump well before the president fired him on May 9th, according to former Department of Justice spokesperson. Uh, the spokesperson, Matthew Miller, who served as DOJ's director of the Office of Public Affairs under former Agener Attorney General Eric Holder, mm. that's another one, isn't he, uh, suggested that Comey may have been building an obstruction of justice case against the president in an interview with none other than the Washington Compost. Mm. It's unbelievable. The Washington Post is nothing, you know, we had a quote about this in our article. They are no longer interested in informing the public in doing the right thing. The Post is no longer a serious publication, but a member of what Bannon termed the opposition party. Their goal is no longer to inform and serve the public. Their goal is now to destroy the president of the United States. Yeah, pretty much. And you know, you can say we were all bitter and disliked President Obama. We were not like this. Bitter gun clingers. That's right. Bible clingers gun on cl to our Bibles and guns. Yeah. That's right. But we were not like this. This is just the most vitriolic hatred and I've Obama ever seen in my life. Obama was actually doing really bad stuff. That's right. <laughs> he wasn't a patriot trying to save what's left yeah. of this country. Mm -hmm. So it, it goes on. Uh, Miller's suggestion carries weight, blah, 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 blah. While Miller said it is standard practice for an FBI director to record potentially inappropriate conversations and behavior, Comey could have taken a different approach when speaking to the president. This is another thing that this article doesn't cover, which is disappointing to me. If Comey had information about the president of the United States acting illegally, obstructing justice, blah, 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 his duty was to go directly to Congress with his findings. Mm -hmm. That is what his job would have been. That is the only thing he would have been allowed to do. Go to Congress, tell them what was happening, let Congress begin impeachment proceedings. Yeah. And I'm d telling you, the Democrats, never Trump Republicans, Ryan conservatives, whatever you want to call these losers, who happen to have an R next to their name, they would have pounced on the opportunity to get rid of a patriot like President Trump. Oh, yeah. Comey's just a diva who saved Hillary Clinton's butt from going to prison when he went out there and illegally said that nobody would prosecute her. Unless you listen. That wasn't his job to do it. Unless you listen that. to Hillary Clinton. Well, and I mean, we can go back all the way back then. Lynch. What, what, what did Lynch do? She had the... the Tarmac the airport, airport conversation meeting, yep. with President Bill Clinton. I mean, is who she was investigating? Who she was? Well, who the FBI was investigating? Yeah. And after that, the next day, after meeting on this private jet on the tarmac mm -hmm. with Clinton, that's totally. With, how do people just meet like this? Yeah. When she said they discussed grandchildren and golf. Just happened upon his plane and just a happened to walk <laughs> on yeah. Clinton's plane for a twenty-minute top secret or forty-five minute, I yeah, believe, yeah, top secret meeting, minutes, yeah. and then. The very next day, she said she was going to follow the suggestions of the FBI yeah. when it came with what to do with Hillary Clinton. And then the he, FBI he came out, and yeah, and read off 57 crimes she did, and then like, but no reasonable person would prosecute her. That's right. That was basically a code word. If you prosecute her, you're going to end up dead, like Seth Rich, or something else. You're going to have your career destroyed, like maybe a little bit like National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, yeah, who has been cleared yet somehow is still having his name dragged through the mud who in these fake news articles. Clearance since before Obama, top level. Well, Obama top was happy to have him. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, it's totally, it's totally insane the amount of. Uh, but he got in trouble, in trouble for talking to Russia when Hillary Clinton sold 25% of our plutonium to Russia. That's right. But no big deal. Uh, uranium. Uranium. The stuff they make nukes yeah. with. Hillary Clinton <laughs> sold it to the Russians, and in exchange, the Russians gave a bunch of cushy speech deals yeah. where Bill Clinton flew to Russia mm -hmm. and gave $100,000 speeches. But that's not colluding with Russia at all. No, that's that's not. That's, yeah. that's, that's just a coincidence. It's because they're Clintons. It's, it's just a yeah. coincidence. What are you, nuts? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it is one of the biggest Clinton crimes. That is straight up compromising our national security. Yeah. It is allowing the she people. She should be in prison for that alone, it, her and her that rapist husband. Been heard, Bill, little Bill. 
alleged rapist. We have yeah. to throw that in there mm -hmm. for, for no good at, for, for only one good legal reason. Yeah. Uh, but it, it is totally, I, this is a woman who, according to the, hill, the, the left, the left now says Russia is evil, Russia is evil, Russia is evil. According to the left, she should be public enemy number one for what she did with Russia. True. It's it, not to mention she did a ton of deals with Russia. We now know from the new book, which who, name escapes me, about the Clinton uh, the Clinton fallout. What was happening on the election night and leading up to it and right after. We now know that the Russian conspiracy theory for the Russians hacking and Comey and all this nonsense, the whole being the reason why Hillary Clinton lost the election, it was all hatched within an hour yeah. after the results came Complete in. Complete BS. It's all BS. Whatever the left stream TV tells you, just believe exactly the opposite. They say Russia bad, Russia's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we said it. We said it on this very program mm -hmm. almost a year ago because we've been broadcasting for almost a year now. Anything the mainstream media says, you may as well just believe the opposite. Yeah. If they say Trump's going to lose, well, you may as well go ahead and put all your bets on President Trump. Mm -hmm. If they say Trump's going to be impeached, perhaps he's going to form the forty thousand year Trump and Reich we all think is just around the corner. Yeah. Because it's just they they haven't been right on a single thing this entire no. time. And this is from Breitbart. We're going to have to go to break before too long. Long, but I do want to get this down in this segment. Comey under oath have not experienced any request to stop FBI investigations. The debate about former FBI Director James Comey's alleged memo, which again, he's breaking the law. He should be tried criminally for lying under oath if he really has this memo. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, this memo about President Donald Trump's attempt to stop the agency's investigation into former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn showed up on Twitter Wednesday. This is just yesterday now. A reporter tweeted that Comey denied any interference with the agency's investigations while under oath at the Senate hearing earlier this month. Jack Posobiec, Washington bureau chief for the rebel.media, tweeted about it Wednesday. And he said that Comey said, and I quote, not in my experience, because it would be a big deal to tell the FBI to stop doing something that without an appropriate purpose. I mean, where oftentimes they give us opinions that we don't see a case and they're so, and so, this is how Comey talks, by the way. It's like impossible to understand what he means. Mm -hmm. And so you ought to stop investing resources in it. But I'm talking about a situation where we would be told to stop something for a political reason. That would be a very big deal. It has not happened in my experience. That is Comey saying that basically he's lying now or he was lying under oath. Who knows which it was, maybe both. We gotta take a moment off. You're watching The Honest Media. Welcome back to The Honest Media. I know we've been talking a lot about Russia. I know it's a tiring topic. I know you, the viewer, are tired of listening to us rebut fake news for an entire program. It's not my favorite way to spin the show either. Mm -hmm. But we've got some fantastic, unbelievably amazing news. This one from The Daily Wire. We'll just start with this. And I do, I have to hedge this. It's got to get better. It's got to get better. ICE arrested over 40,000 illegals in Trump's first 100 days. Yay. Yeah. That's a lot of dang people. That is a lot of people. <laughs> now, at the same time, though, that is a lot of people, but it's got to be ramping up. Because if this isn't ramping up, we're talking maybe uh, uh, 600,000 in the first term. That's not enough. There's estimates saying we got 11 million of these suckers here. All of them are criminals by entering this country yeah. illegally. That's but a ton of people, though. 40,000 yeah. in 100 days. No yeah. kidding. That is mm -hmm. a good start. I'm not disappointed at all. And according to U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, in the first 100 days since President Trump signed his executive orders regarding immigration enforcement priorities, ICE has arrested more than 41,000 individuals who are either known or suspected of being in the country illegally. Now, that is... 37.6% more than the comparable period in 2016. That's really good news. Yeah. That is just... We just need that wall up so they can't get back over here. That's right. That, But, you know, that is what we put him there for. That is why the mm -hmm. American people elected Trump. This is what we wanted to see. He was making good on his promises. This is the type of thing that the fake news will deny is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, the ICE a acting director, Thomas Holman, sa stated, These statistics reflect President Trump's commitment to enforce our immigration laws fairly and across the board. ICE agents and officers have been given clear and 
instructions to focus on threats to public safety and national security, which has resulted in a substantial increase in the arrest of convicted criminal aliens. However, when we encountered others who were in the country unlawfully, we will execute our sworn duty to in and enforce the law. As, and it goes on and such. So basically they're just doing their job with the same laws that have always existed, but they were told not to do them basically for the past that's right. Years. Catch and release. Yeah. You bring them in. You say, "Oh, you raped some poor schoolgirl. All right. Well, we're gonna drive you forty miles that way, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna drop you off. Yeah. That way, you can get back at what you do." Yeah. Best. If they even bothered to arrest them in the past, a lot of times they wouldn't even arrest these illegal uh, immigrants for DUIs right. or anything else because just. Too much trouble, just eh, on your way, bud. And you mentioned, by the way, you mentioned the border wall, which we absolutely have to have. And we've actually got a 25 foot iron wall, literally, steel wall being put up as we speak. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Daily Wire reported. Lasers. <laughs> that's right, we need yeah. lasers and nuclear fallout. That'll mm -hmm. keep them out. Yeah. Uh, in April, the Daily Wire reported that border crossings have declined by a whopping 93% since December due to the threat of deportation deterring people from crossing illegally. That is an insane statistic. Yeah. That is a whole well. You had Obama basically saying, "Come on in, we don't care." And, and you can vote. And by now the we way. got a guy saying they're closed, keep out. That's right. So they're not coming in. We're full, in other words. Yeah. And we are full. <laughs> we we're, you dri you, have you driven on a road recently? Yeah. yeah. We we are at capacity. Sorry, mm. sorry, losers. Fix your country. <laughs> stop ruining ours. <laughs> uh, enforcing immigration law may cause left-wing outlets like Mother Jones to hyperventilate, but it turns out that properly enforcing immigration laws has helped stem the tide of illegal immigration, which in turn will help America's communities be safer and maintain the country's sovereignty. Sovereignty. Yeah, and I do. It costs us a lot of money. I mean, I can't remember. Was it twenty to thirty percent of the prison population is illegal immigrants? It is something along those lines, yeah. and it's totally unbelievable. And one fun fact: we can't even deport these people after we arrest them unless their country of origin will take them back. Yeah, and we just need to buy an island somewhere and drop them all off in it. What, what, what's <laughs> the what's the one in? Uh, what, were the Alcatraz? That's not a bad idea. <laughs> uh, but it's it's just absolutely uh, Lord of the Flies. It's just absolutely uh -huh. unbelievable the way that America have uh, we as collectively we have our chain dragged around by these foreign governments. I think we should just put them on a bus and send them south of the border. Frankly, they came here illegally. It's their country's job to take care of them. Yeah, put I them mean, on a plane and parachute them out just somewhere over South America. <laughs> that, <laughs> Central will work. I, yeah. We don't have to use that much jet fuel, but it's totally <laughs> unbelievable. Now we've got another really excellent piece of Trump news. This comes at us from The Hill. Sheriff David Clark says he's accepted Department of Homeland Security job. And this guy, if you don't know David Clark by now, I'm sorry. He's one of the best sheriffs in this country. The only bad part about this is he's no longer going to be a sheriff. Yeah. It's the only bad part. Sheriff David Clark of Milwaukee County, Wisconsin, said Wednesday he has accepted a job in the Department of Homeland Security. Clark co told conservative radio host Vicki McKenna during an interview on 1330 WISN that he will leave his post as sheriff to serve as a Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security. This is his quote. I'm both honored and humbled to be appointed to this position by Secretary Kelly, working for the Trump administration. Clark said he will leave his position as sheriff in June to work in the Office of Partnership and Programs as a liaison with state, local, and tribal law enforcement. While DHS did not confirm Clark's reported role, it did note that the position in question, this is the best part of the whole dollar deal, does not require Senate confirmation. Yeah, that's Which good. means we can bypass these obstructionists we see in the United States Congress. Mm -hmm. During the 2016 presidential race, Clark supported President Trump and has praised him since the inauguration. At the Conservative Political Action Conference in February, Clark spoke of his support for Trump's executive orders on immigration, quote, In President Trump, we have chosen a leader, a leader who I expect many of you in this room well know that I both campaigned and vigorously supported for the highest office in this land. And Clark has been an outspoken supporter of Trump's proposed wall on the U.S.-Mexican yeah. border. Yeah, that's good news. We need to start getting more of these guys like him in that actually supported Trump and had the good ideas and get all these old throwbacks out of here. They use Obama, Bush, Clinton holdovers. Neocon, who, Thanks to the globalist. FBI, many people say, we can't get out. 
Yeah. We can't get out because Comey and his cronies were keeping the process mm -hmm. stalled. And uh, one more positive, wonderful news story. I believe we have the time. This is actually from abroad, but it gives us hope for the caliphate of Europa mm -hmm. to no longer be a caliphate. This is from uh, Breitbart, London. Poland says that taking migrants is, quote, much worse than EU sanctions. Couldn't agree with them more. Yeah. Taking migrants, w migrants would do more damage to Poland than the European Union. Sanctions, Interior Minister Marius Blazgak has said, after a fresh warnings from Brussels over the country's refusal to welcome asylum seekers. We, this is his quote, we mustn't forget the terror attacks that have taken place in Western Europe. And now, in the bigger EU countries, these are unfortunately now a fact of life. So, what can we say, folks? We lost France. We lost England. Maybe it'll bounce back. Poland's about wait. to only hold out in Europe that's not letting these uh, invaders in. They're not migrants. They're invaders. In yeah. any other age period of time, they'd be called invaders. Poland, Hungary, Slovakia. The, it's not even Eastern Europe. But Eastern Central Europe, they're going to be the ones who, again, come to save the rest alongside, unfortunately, probably the United States. Mm -hmm. You've been watching The Honest Media. You can find us online on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter. Also, thehonestmedia.com to read all of our articles. And as always, we'll join you again next week.